Hi! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a transition like this one using speed ramping in Premiere Pro. So to get started I have already imported the two clips that I'm going to use and as you can see they're both drone clips and they have similar motion throughout. And the first thing that I have to get out of the way before starting the tutorial is that you absolutely don't need to be using drone clips for this effect. All that's important is that you have two clips with similar motion throughout so that the transition actually makes sense. I'm going to select these two clips and drop them into a new sequence and then I'm going to expand video track 1 quite a lot so that we can see the speed graph. We're going to right click on this effects icon and go to time remapping speed and we're going to do that with the second clip as well and right now the line that we are looking at is actually the speed graph and it is a flat line because we're working with two clips that are playing at their regular speed which is 100%. We're going to hit P on your keyboard to select the pen tool and you're going to find the point at which you want your transition to start. So that is right here. I'm going to set a point, then I'm going to go to the second clip and I want the transition to end right before this sun glare. So I'm going to set my point right here and then I'm going to press V on my keyboard to switch back to the regular selection tool. Now before I start speeding up this footage I'm going to go into file, project settings and then general and I'm going to change my renderer to software only because when you're using speed ramping in Premiere Pro sometimes frame drops or similar issues occur which make it really hard to edit your videos. So even if you have a GPU capable of using these other engines, I recommend you set it to software only. And now we're going to change the speed of the clips. You're going to drag this line up and you're going to see the value increasing. I recommend that you use somewhere between 400 and 800 percent for this transition. So I'm going to use roughly around 600 for both of my clips. And as you can see the timeline has changed because we have been speeding up these two clips. Now we're going to drag this point out. So if you didn't see that you click right here and then you drag it out to create a ramp. Now this ramp is not curved at all so to curve it you click on these handles and then you drag them out as well. So with the first clip I like to make a steep ramp which changes the value smoothly from 100% to 600% and then I'm going to do the same thing with the second clip only this time I'm going to make the ramp a bit more gradual going from 600 to 100%. So as you can see the first ramp that I have is a bit steeper than the second one. So what I do now is I trim the first clip so that it ends when this speed ramp takes the value to 600 and then I trim the second one so that it starts as the ramp is taking the value from 600 back to 100 again and as you can see I can delete the gap by selecting it and pressing delete and now this is what we have. So now I can play this back to see how it looks and if I'm happy with it. If you need to tweak it a bit then you can go back and change those values before you delete the gap between these two clips and to add one more final touch which is going to make this transition even more appealing to the eye we're going to create a new adjustment layer using the default settings for your sequence. We're going to place it over the transition and trim it so that it lasts as long as this ramp does. Then we're going to go into effects and search for directional blur and apply it to the adjustment layer. So now once we go into effect controls you can see that we have two values that we can change. So the first value is the direction and when it's set to zero it's zero degrees which is a straight vertical line. If you set it to 90 it's going to be a horizontal line. For this movement 
I need a line that goes something like that. So that's roughly around 115 degrees. And you don't have to be really precise, even though obviously you can be. And now I'm going to keyframe the blur length. So I wanted to start increasing from zero all the way up to five at the peak of the transition. And then I wanted to go back to zero. And I'm going to create keyframes for each of those values. Now, when I play this back, you can see that we have added just a little touch, which makes the transition even more appealing for the viewer. That's it for this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. For more tutorials like this one, please check out my channel. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.